Hey, good morning. good morning. Welcome to Friday. Friday. Yay. You struggled to get out of bed this morning. Oh, it was hard this morning. Why? I almost didn't. I know. I, I saw you laying didn't. there trying to decide. But I did. And went to the gym and had a hard time at it. Uh, but I did chest and chest. What? I did shoulders and uh, biceps. That's it. Did nothing extra. Yeah. Did the bare minimum and got out of dodge. Why do you think it was so hard for you today? I don't know. I guess I didn't sleep well last night. I don't know why though. Okay. Okay. But uh, no, I had a minor little headache, so maybe that was it. But yep, there you have it. Yeah. Um, I was planning on uh, washing my car today because today's a cardio day for me. But I know we're gonna go for a bike ride at least one day over the weekend, so. I'll get that cardio in. That's not going to be an issue. So I thought, oh, you know, it's a great morning. I'll wash the car. That'll be awesome. But unfortunately, my little car has been sitting in the garage for too long, not being driven, and I got in it to move it out of the garage to wash it, and the battery was dead, and it wouldn't start. Right. So I had to put it on the charger, and I'll, I guess I'll wash it a different day. Mm -hmm. So I ended up working around the house and cleaning the kitchen and not being super exercise-driven at all. But such is life. That's such the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes that happens. Yep, yes. exactly. Um, for breakfast today, you were having oatmeal. Yes, with decaf coffee. Did a coffee run. Did a coffee run. Do you have seeds in it today, or did you no leave seeds. the seeds out? Well, seeds out. You have well, no... Well, that's true. I have chia seeds, and I have hemp seeds. Right, but no pumpkin seeds, and no... no sunflower seeds. And you have flax. And flax seeds. So just the pumpkin seeds right. and the sunflower seeds. So when I said out. no seeds, what I really meant was, yes, I have seeds. <laughs> and I'm going to have... Part of a sweet potato, you can see it in there, and I'm gonna put hummus on it and probably have part of an avocado and some tomatoes and some so olives. A, a mesh of yeah, that. it's gonna be yummy stuff. Yes. So that's my goal for breakfast. But because it's Friday, we're doing a recap of the su subjects we've covered this week. And we did a series on intermittent fasting this week, so we covered a lot of intermittent fasting things. The first thing that we talked to you about on Monday was what is intermittent fasting? And we told you that it's a way of eating where you go longer stretches of time between food intake to give your body a break from insulin production, which gives your body a chance to look for cells that need to be repaired and just take a minute to do some inventory. And we uh, explained to you that it's closer to how humans have evolved to eat because we didn't used to have food readily available 24-7, 365. It was something that you ate when food was available. But now in today's, in today's world, you could eat literally every minute of every day if you wanted to. And it puts your body constantly in a go-go mode and it increases your IGF-1 and it does all these, which IGF-1 is a growth hormone that causes, can cause cancer cells to turn on. So intermittent fasting, in short, is just a way to give your body a break from processing food so that it can focus on doing other things. Right. And where does Tor fit into that? Is that also with IGF-1? Um, to, I have to look up how Tor fits directly into intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. but it, that is another, another hormone. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, on Tuesday, we did what is the best method of intermittent fasting, What's, what, which method works best. And in short, we told you whichever one you can make work for your life. Right. There's no right or wrong way to intermittent fast. You can, you know, do what we do, which is the 5-2. You can do um, a feeding window, which is every day you eat during a sh shorter period of time, so you give your body more of a break overnight. Um, there's another method that, I don't know if it has a name, the one where you do it once a month for three, three days. Three days, yeah. I don't yeah, know. It's called crazy. <laughs> but. It is not. It's People not. who want to try that. If you're doing do that, bravo. <laughs> but, so there's a lot of different ways, and you can pick whichever one works for you. There's no best method. It's whichever one, you know, fits into your life. Um, on Wednesday, we answered a question that we get really, really often, which is, will intermittent fasting slow my metabolism? And the short answer is no. And we, Russ told you about how when he was bodybuilding, when he was getting ready for a show, he would do a three-day pyramid diet where you eat low calories, medium calories, and high calories, and it keeps your body um, guessing about, well, are there enough calories? Are there not enough calories? And it keeps your body from then saying, oh, it's a, it's a restriction. We have to go into restriction mode, which is what happens if you do the diets where you're constantly in portion control. And that's a key point. Your body's very intelligent. So the more you restrict your calories, the more your body will adjust to fit that calorie intake. Right. So the thought about if I keep dropping my calories, I'm going to lose weight. 
your body will adjust and it makes it harder and harder and harder. And your, and your calorie count keeps going down further and further and further. And it's miserable. Which is why calorie counting doesn't really work. Yeah, calorie counting restriction doesn't work because that will slow your metabolism. But with intermittent fasting where you're feeding your body as it expects to be fed consistently and then there's times where, oh, there's no calories now. Okay, fine, I'll just burn fat. That's no big deal. Your body doesn't feel like it has to hang on to every calorie that it gets because it knows, oh yeah, there's calories. They just aren't readily available all the time. So no, intermittent fasting will not slow your metabolism. You don't have to worry about that. And then yesterday, the last question we answered was, what can I eat, drink, or can I eat, drink, or chew gum when intermittent fasting? And we talked about how you can have black coffee and black tea or green tea with no, you know, nothing in it, or you can drink water or bubbly water. I happen to really like bubbly water these days. So all of that's fine because it doesn't um, cause metabolic change in your body. But I recommend it against chewing gum, even sugarless gum, because that does cause your body to release some insulin because of the sugar flavor. Um, and then, I was, yes, sugar flavor, you said it. Never mind. I was going to say exactly what you just said at the end there. I didn't give you enough chance to say that. <laughs> because, yes, you're right. I mean, your body still thinks it's getting sugar. Right. Even though it's not, so it does the whole insulin thing. Right. And, yeah. that, and then also, it'll make your fasting harder because once it does that, then your body's like, oh, we, I thought we were getting calories and we didn't, so now we need calories to oh. offset it. It's sort of so, a process that requires fuel. Right. And the intermittent fasting is going to help with uh, your insulin sensitivity so it can reduce... Um, issues that are, you know, pre-diabetes and that kind of thing because it's going to make your body better able to use insulin when it does have insulin because it's not constantly pumping through your system. Right. So that those are the kind of four big topics we covered on intermittent fasting this week. If you have a topic you'd like us to cover, I'm going to try and start doing something where I like pick a topic and answer one question a day about it. Um, I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm kind of leaning toward that. Yeah, sounds good to me. Um, we also did uh, schedule our next webinar, uh, How to Feed a Human webinar. It's for July 17th, and we have updated all the paperwork in the background for that. So you can go to howtofeedahuman.com, and if you missed our last webinar, you can definitely watch the next one right. on the 17th. Right. Um, our business website is R&R Journey to Health. No, rnrjourney.com. Right. I know our website. I really do. rnrjourney.com. We are on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Please do like, subscribe, and follow. And if you're getting value out of these, please do like and share them. Comment. Let us know. Hey, yes, I watched this. Um, it's always interesting at the end of the day when I look and see our videos have had like 100 views and nobody has liked it. Nobody has shared it. Nobody has commented yeah. on it. I'm like, we have a bunch of lurkers out there. Yes. I'm not sure what the deal yes. is with it, but please say hi. Let us know yes. you're getting value. Some, I mean, honestly, give us some feedback because we'd like to adjust what we do based on what people want. Yeah, absolutely. What, how we want the information delivered. Yep. The so, type of information, we won't change that. <laughs> so if there's anything you'd like to know, if you have questions, if you're on this journey and you're having success or you're having challenges, let us know that. Um, and whatever that looks like, because we love hearing and sharing other people's journeys. Right, and we can give tips. If we know what, what the challenges are, we can offer tips. Yep. And what I've been getting, I got a couple of people took our survey, which is on the r, &R Journey page um, this week that have questions. So I'll, I'll incorporate those into our, our daily lives and answer some of those questions awesome. in the coming weeks. Is there anything you wanted to add? I think that's it. All right, I think we should go eat breakfast it's, and start our weekend. It's Friday. Yay! So with that, we will say... Eat real food, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a Have great a weekend. weekend. We'll see you on Monday.